went through a process of depression, I went through a process of saying no to jobs, yeah. I went through a process of saying to scandal, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not coming. Yeah. Let's just stop it till you want when I come here, what is my business? What is your business? What do I need to understand? Wow. That doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in South Africa. And we're rolling. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for the invite. <laughs> I'm really excited to have this conversation with you because you are a working actor sure. and we have so much to learn from you. Sure. Please introduce yourself to everyone in terms of who you are, your name, where you're from and when acting started for you. Uh, my name is Bongi Lemantai. I'm originally from Cape Town mm -hmm. in Stellenbosch, in a small township called Kayan Nandi. Uh -huh. um, I grew up there, my father was a bishop. Oh really? Yeah. So I grew up you in church. Bishop, son. Yes, yes. So you're gonna start coaching scriptures? <laughs> oh you're not that hectic. No, I'm not. I'm not that hectic. Okay. But I know because I grew up okay. in church. <laughs> okay. So so the whole thing for me started in church. Yeah. Uh, because I grew up under that roof of music, mm. you know. And I also believe that church has something to do with drama. Because you see a lot of that's where the theatrics are exactly. So, um, just to cut the long story short, I used to write music for for church mm, at the early age. Mm. So how I was introduced to theatre, mm. I used to write music. Mm. So, and in my times, which was nineteen ninety seven and I matriculated, I wanted to pursue the career of uh, writing music. Oh, is it? Never acting. Never acting. Oh, beautiful. And look at you now. Never acting. You're the main man. What yeah. was never <laughs> So I went to, to the University of Stellenbosch, which yeah. was very close by. Yeah. Uh, because already I was writing music for also theatre plays in Stellenbosch University. Mm, beautiful. And I remember at that time there was, um, it's only Afrikaans plays that I used to do. So I grew up doing Afrikaans plays. Really? Not even so you're understanding. Oh, you know <laughs> Not even understanding okay. anywhere in Afrikaans. Yeah, yeah. And um, in the midst of that, I did um, physical theatre. Mm. And it was called at that time Movement. So I did Movement. And okay. um, I was introduced to Movement. I was doing Movement plays. I was doing physical theatre in Stellenbosch. Not yeah. even understanding the language, writing music for that. Yeah. And in Cape Town, we have the farm side yeah, yeah. of Cape Town, yeah, I can which the plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can so imagine. I'm from Stellenbosch, mm -hmm. farm side. Yeah. And I said to myself, I need to move to town. Yeah. And I was teaching also, you know, young kids. I had groups of uh, young kids who we were influenced by the likes of Mbonieni, mm -hmm. where by the likes of, uh, what do you call, who is this name? Uh, the over exaggerating because Mbogen was also being taught by him. Gibson Kent. Gibson Kent. So oh, we were influenced Gibson, by the yeah. likes of Oprah Kim. Mm. So, it, and then I was like, I, I'm working in this center in Kayam Nandi. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching kids music. Yeah. And a guy called Brett Bailey came. Mm -hmm. And Brett Bailey said he wants to, to create a, a company mm. uh, because he was working at Spear in, yeah. in Stellenbosch. Mm. So I joined Brett Bailey's company, yeah. early 90s as well, yeah. and I worked for that company uh, Federal Bank 5 for about five years. Yeah, yeah. After five years, mm -hmm. I moved to Cape Town, yeah, yeah. and then in Cape Town I started doing set works. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not an actor, guys. I'm just a physical actor. Yeah, and I'm scared yeah. of the text. And yeah. I'm, I, I'm scared of everything. Yeah. I, but I know my strong point is music. Mm -hmm. So I started writing music for theater in, 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 in Cape Town. Yeah. And so I met the lady called Lara Foot. Mm -hmm. And then from there, my journey grew. Yeah, yeah, to acting, yeah, Lara introduced me to UCT. Yeah. And uh, Lara introduced me to Dexter Theatre, mm -hmm. and then etc. etc. You yeah. know, started growing. Growing. So, yeah. Yeah. And then when do you move to Joburg? 
My story of moving to Jobek, it was so sad because I used yeah. to come here doing theater. Mm. You know, so I used to come here doing stories like Miss Julie, you yeah. know, Karumus, mm. you can name it. Yeah. I did a, a, a film mm. called Man. Mm. Oh, is that what moved you from Johannesburg? Of to Johannesburg. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to Johannesburg. Yes. There's so much controversy around in Lewa. Anyway, that's a story for another day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, I just want also to tell people about that story because yeah. I think it's very close to my heart mm -hmm. and it changed my life mm -hmm. in a way because yeah. I didn't move because I, I had a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember it was my birthday and I was home chilling yeah. with friends and I, I got all these calls. Mm -hmm. I kept on ignoring the calls because I thought maybe it's people who are trying to say, you know, happy, yeah. happy, what, what. Yeah. And eventually I went through my text. Everyone yeah. is asking me, are you safe? Are you safe from yeah. the production company? Yeah. And then I phoned one of the producers and I said, what's happening? She said to me, guy, there's a whole fire that is spreading at the moment. Yeah. You need to you're head hunted. Yes. You're head hunted. <laughs> and at my place, I didn't have TV, I didn't have anything. I'm yeah. chill, put friends, I'm happy. Mm. And then they bought me a ticket to come to Johannesburg, and I was in some house in Parkhurst. Yeah. Locked, and the rest is locked, yeah, yeah. locked in that house for about a month. Yeah. I was depressed. Oh, I was always God. wearing caps, yeah. and remember at that time, Mm. There were no masks and stuff, so yeah. I was locked in that house. I stayed in there for about a month, Shut and I couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. yeah, and in the midst of that, Inaba was being produced, it was being broadcast, exactly. and then I got a call and it from, made waves yeah. internationally. Yeah, no, it was. So look I, at God. Yeah, and I, and I don't regret telling exactly. that story. It's sad, but yeah. look at God, yeah. like. So I got a call from Scandal, from, mm. from one of the writers and, and the producers, mm. and they asked me to come for, for auditions. Mm. I went to Sasani Studios and mm. I did my audition. And they called me for callbacks, I did my callback. And while I was doing all of that, mm. the fire was still burning on the other side. Are you serious? I'm serious, because I couldn't go. Yeah. Yeah. And remember in Cape Town, I'm running, uh, I was running at that time, yeah, yeah. as Abalaza, which is the the festival, the, the festival oh God, and it's a development mm. program, yeah. So I was running that with some friends. Mm. I couldn't go to the main festivals, I couldn't go to the main festival, I couldn't do anything mm. regarding that program mm. because I was here in Chelsea. Yeah. So in the midst of that, Zabalaza is happening, people are calling me, yeah. are you coming? Yeah. I'm worried because the main festivals are happening because yeah. Eastern Cape is also taking another tour saying, yeah. we, don't, we want to see you. We will kill you. I'm getting messages from my Facebook, from my WhatsApp, everywhere. People, everywhere. And my parents didn't know. So my how kids. did you deal with that? Because that's such a very hard and dark place to be in. And mentally, what does it do to you? You know what I mean? It changed me. I don't want to lie. Mm -hmm. I started. Um, I started asking myself a question about my industry mm -hmm. because we tell stories. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. I don't write stories. Yeah. I'm an actor. Yeah. You know? So the only thing that I do is to breathe life to stories. Yeah. So I started questioning people as well. Yeah. That how do you take things so personal? Mm -hmm. And I started also respecting my culture as well because you need to also respect their opinion, yeah. their feelings as well about yeah. how they feel. So you can't just say I'm right. I was just telling the story. So yeah. I had mixed feelings about that, and I was depressed. And financially, I was out as well because I wasn't working. Of course, because you shoot way before yeah. then the thing is released. When it's released, yeah. the money is finished. It's finished. And you're still suffering. And I'm in Jersey, in an apartment. Yeah. And I don't know anyone. I don't have friends. I don't have visitors. Yeah. So if it, I was just depressed. I don't want to lie. Yeah. I went through a process of depression. I went through a process of saying no to jobs. Yeah. I went through a process of saying to Scandal, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not coming. Yeah. Let's just stop the TV work thing. Yeah. Know, because it was TV versus theater. Mm -hmm. And I work, I look back for 21 years of my theater life, it was just peaceful. Mm -hmm. Now I looked 21 oh, years goodness. after the time when I'm thinking now, wow, I'm getting this now. Yeah. If Chris Bond, you know, who's a TV, yeah. the next thing, 
things are changing my life. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Not in a good way. Yeah. So Scandal called me Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Where are you? We are shooting Monday. Yeah. Trying to reach all my friends and I'm ignoring their calls. I can see the previous. So it gave you me. so much anxiety. Yeah. So you were anxious because I was. if you become more famous then what happens? Yeah, I was. Shucks, man, that's such a big thing. Yeah. So I came But back where are you now? Where are you today? To be to be quite honest, I I I'm in a space where theatre for me was was a beautiful space. Yeah. I could be my, uh, myself. Yeah. I can go anywhere yeah, in yeah. terms of life. Yeah. You know, I can be broke. I can I can express myself to other people exactly. and say, but feel to I will see you know, mama, <laughs> And you don't have to worry about no. other people's opinions. No. But once you're on TV it's a different yeah. ball game. So it, it created a, a different image. Mm -hmm. And remember I'm you know I'm just close to, over forty. Now, at this age, to become someone else and being affected psychologically by these things, mm -hmm. being respected, being celebrated when you are home, you feel like, wow, I'm, I'm being this person that people love, yeah. but I'm empty inside. Yeah. You're not empty That's... because sometimes it's financial issues. Mm -hmm. You are empty because you can't go to certain places where you want yeah, to go you to. You choose yourself. what you want to do. Mm. You, 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 you can't make mistakes. Mm. You know, you go to church. You, 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 you've been already in church I was, when I was young. Yeah. Mm. So now you're trying to live this fake life mm. of, okay, I'm, I'm going to be indoors. So it has changed my personal life. It has yeah. changed my image. You know, every time I know before I go out, I have to make sure I'm dressed in a certain way because someone will come and say to me, can I take a picture with you? Yeah, and that person will time. post yeah. that picture. And the society that, that we live in, they don't even look at the pictures anymore. They look at what can we point that will make this person bad, bad or low. It's always they, it's, about to you know what I mean? They can point your... It's something that you didn't even your nails. If your nails are dead, they will point something. Mm. So for me, my life now has has taken a, an off ramp in a way. Mm. You know that I, I, I'm not feeling very comfortable with myself mm. as much as I was confident in my life about yeah. I can do whatever I want to do. Mm. I can I can I can make mistakes. Now I'm careful. I look at my kids. I need to pro protect my kids. Yeah. I need to protect everyone that is mm. around me, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, you also want to say to your people, please support us because we want you to support us. Yeah. You know, so I am in that stage. Yeah, of, in that stage of figuring it all out. Yeah. And then what are you doing then to protect your mental health as well? Because it's a lot. It sounds like it's a lot. You're transitioning and it's a lot. Because we because we're telling stories in you know with different characters. Yeah. At times you I have an advantage of playing characters that are different. Yeah, yeah. That at times I can pretend in life that I'm happy. Yeah. Because that's what, that's what we do. We <laughs> and pretend. the brain doesn't know the difference. Yes. It really thinks you're happy. You know, so yeah. so I, I, I know when when to place or how to place myself. Last year, I had a full year of saying no to jobs because I knew mentally I was not strong. Mm, okay. You know? Mm -hmm. I'll make a, a very easy example. Yeah. Um, places where I used to go to and just chill yeah. and be myself mm. are different now. Yeah. You know? The place is the same, but they are different for me. Yeah, yeah. Because now, when I go to those places, it's not about the place anymore, it's about me, mm. you know? And, and it's sad because, you know, I was just having a chat now about going to funerals. It's difficult, you know, it's not easy. Yeah, you don't get to grieve properly. You know, yeah. exactly. Um, my father passed away two years back and people also, in, in the midst of that, people were still taking pictures, taking videos. 
and 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 and, and it's difficult because yeah. you also you in a way you know you know you need to say mm -hmm. I don't want to come across as someone who is a celebrity. I don't like celebrities, by the way. Yeah. You know, I love human beings, but mm -hmm. I think there's something wrong with celebrities yeah. and the way they take it. The explanation of a celebrity for me is being celebrated. That's why you are being called a celebrity because yeah. people, when they see you, mm -hmm. they celebrate your work. Mm -hmm. They not just your groupies. Yeah. And but then you get celebrities who who will say to people, no, 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 I don't do that. Yeah. I don't take pictures. Yeah, yeah. 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 So at times, every time when you try to to be, not try, when you are humble about who you are, yeah. it's causing more troubles for you. Because yeah. the more you are humble, the more, the more you are, yeah, the more you are being taken advantage of. Yeah. You know, so you need to find like a, a balance and yeah. a position for yourself. So I'm still trying to find it. Yeah. And also I am, I'm not afraid to say to people, I get depressed. I, I, which is good. Yeah. We all get depressed. Yeah. Everybody gets depressed, but we like to hide it. That's a thing. And we hide it so well, don't you? Yeah. And I think that's the problem with this world sure. and social media and our society, which is where I'm coming from as well, while we're talking about social media. What do you think of social media and brand deals and really positioning yourself as a brand, as a business, as an actor? Yeah, I think, you know something, if, if something is working for particular people, you, you don't want to be negative about it. If social mm -hmm. media works for the pe people mm -hmm. and you know, it, it puts bread on their table. We understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because we, we're living in, in, in hard times. Mm -hmm. But personally for me, maybe because I'm from old school, mm -hmm. I, I'm far from, from, from that life. Yeah. You know, and I'm far because of certain reasons. And so I think some of those reasons, I, I did point them out. Yeah. Like, personally, I'm a private person. Mm -hmm. Two, I believe that <clears throat> it depends on what grounds I'm talking about social media. Mm -hmm. In acting, if personally for me, you know that you are not an actor, mm -hmm. but because you have viewers mm -hmm. and will meet on set, we need to find a way of saying, now we're meeting a social, a, an Instagram actor, a Facebook actor, or whatever, because this person has followers. Yeah. So let's just be honest yeah. and say, I have followers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sell the show. Mm -hmm. And then we're talking about people who are like you, who are saying, I want to do this paper. Mm -hmm. I want to finish my PhD. I'm taking this serious. <laughs> yes, I know that. The other part, but now I'm I'm I'm, I'm inviting people. I'm saying to people, I wanna do this. Yeah, I love what you're saying. So there's different types of actors. Yes. There's different types of people, and we we need to know how to classify them and look at them like that. Yes. You mustn't lie. Yes. Okay. It's like personally for me, I can't just wake up now because I have so many followers. And I'm like, today I wanna be a doctor. I want to go and be a dentist today because I'm going to have so many people that I'm going to do A, B, C, and it can work. It's a profession. Yeah. Like any, we have to respect okay. it as well because it, now, yeah. I love that. you know, I, personally for me, I can't just be a, a hip hop artist because I have followers as someone who is well known on TV. Mm. I need to respect their craft as well. I need to say to those people, look, I'm going to come. I can't sing. But because in this concert, people want to see my face. So what do you want me to do is the first question. Mm -hmm. And you're saying it in a very respectful way that I am, I'm just an actor, but I believe the, the reason why I'm here, it's an appearance. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. You know, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. Because you meet actors who want to look good, who want to wear certain things, who wants to look, their makeup must be in this way because they don't understand the industry, they don't understand that it's not about them, oh, it's about I love the what stories. You, yeah, I love what you're saying because what you're saying is position yourself. Learn how to position yourself within your space. Yes. You don't necessarily have to now start singing 
you are an actor, but learn how to position yourself, uh, yourself, and also learn how to leverage from what you are already doing. You are an actor, you can get paid for an appearance, you don't necessarily need to get paid for singing, for yeah. example. And oh, for me, nice. it's also great, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean? Like I said to you, there's a business side, but I, I always see people, today, this person, Oh, 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 my pee -pee 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 -pee. And then the next Why day, Why no, I'm just saying because I always, I'm, I'm <laughs> always, I'm always, I'm protecting it. I'm okay. Oh, my pee, oh, Pitoria. I'm joking. <laughs> so I always hear these people say, hey, hey, I'm, I'm DJing today in the UNIT. I'm like, oh, wow, this person is making it. The yes. other day, oh, I'm busy, uh, go Cape Town, uh, I'm, I'm doing an appearance. Mm -hmm. Monday, you're seeing this person on set. Tired, and you're like, okay, let's go. What is your first line? The person is like holding a script. Oh! Wow. Hey, the whole weekend I was busy. Now oh! you, you prepared. Now you must wait for this person oh! who has four other jobs. Yeah. Which is for me. No, but say, no, but that's true. But I agree are. with yeah. you on that one. I'm not saying there's something has, wrong. No, but there's nothing wrong. Like, yeah. Come on, dude. There's nothing wrong, but also you need to think about your colleagues as well. Sure. Okay, so I'm loving so much because I, I understand exactly what you're talking about. There's nothing as exhausting as a prepared actor to get on set and somebody's not prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I understand yeah. what you're talking about. But it's about. also, I mean, there's a lot of things that we always, um, you know, the challenges that we come across when we're on set. Mm -hmm. Firstly, you, you, you come there prepared. You have problems or whatever from where you're coming from. You don't a character. Yeah. You become someone else. Mm -hmm. Now here is this person taking you back to yourself and say, I'm not prepared. Now you are angry, not as a character, you are angry as one, you know, yeah. from you, man. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, what are you what are you saying? Yeah. You know, because also I look at mm. act, acting as something else. For me I'm not a method actor. Yeah. Depending on what I'm doing. Mm. But it's a spiritual thing for me. Mm. Hence I, I put so much effort, mm -hmm. I, I do my research, mm -hmm. I know my the bio the bio of the person that I'm playing. Mm -hmm. I know all of those those things. So like okay, mm -hmm. now I'm this person. Mm -hmm. Hence I'm saying everything. You transcend be, it. Yes. It's spiritual, you transcend. And it, it affects you mentally because mm -hmm. you become this person maybe for about a month depending on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we were doing so this. For two years you become a villain. Mm -hmm. By the time you come home you uh, not yourself because every time you go everywhere you go on uh, you go to the restaurant people are saying oh yeah diga when oh kosha <laughs> yeah. and you're like but I'm not this person okay. and then you go somewhere else on the street you're walking and this person is like yo now another thing you've lost already your pest your 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 your, your identity because mm -hmm. people start calling you yo umbingi or wa ngufu yo in that yeah. store they wanna fool you and like sorry like I'm not no, it's not. I'm not. Yeah, well, so I've, I've lived the life of being yeah. called someone else, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and I've lived so the life. So as an actor, because as an actor, you you constantly becoming, you becoming this character. Yeah. You becoming this character. Yeah. Because as human beings, we have every trait. Sure. You are both good and bad, and you can choose to be in the middle. But as much as we want to find that, no, I'm only a good person. But you, all these things, you're everything under the yeah. sun, and package, exactly so. you <laughs> package. So once you start now um, uh, working on this particular part of yourself, it is. I, I hear what you're saying. It's very not easy, but you can lose a bit of yourself yeah. and become more of this person yeah. on a daily. Especially, like you're saying, yeah. if you're doing it for a long time. Yeah, like I was, like I was, like, 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 like I was saying, with the musicians for me, mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's something wrong, they become actors all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. You know, like I became mm -hmm. an, an actor mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. but with my experience of years, mm -hmm. uh, I know what it takes. Yeah. But I always feel like with, when it comes to, to the respect of the craft, yeah. I always feel respect me, respect mm. what I did, what I do, mm. respect my investment mm. in my craft, mm. and then because I want to respect you as well. Yeah. You know, I'm not here to say, please sing a song for me. I'm here to say, let's go, let's act. Mm. You know, that's what we do in acting. Yeah. Like, guy, let's play. Yeah. Now, if you are playing with someone who doesn't know how to play, hey, I guess it's like the bad guy like that. Yeah. You know, mm. because we have to teach each other. And it's, it's difficult. Yeah. yeah, it has. You know, that's a 
another thing that fascinates me is because musicians they go to studios, they go to rehearsals, they rehearse and they put a band together yeah. and they take this thing serious and you know the sound engineer, they tell the sound engineer, I don't like this. But when it comes to acting for them it's like, um this is okay, like, oh oh I'm fair to eat in the um I want the uh my man yeah. and we're like but yeah. this is not where we are. Yeah, in life. The cross. Yeah, we are here to, to, to tell these stories to people and you know whether it's a story that is gonna transform mm -hmm. people, whether it's a story that is gonna heal people, mm -hmm. whether it's a story that is gonna make our people happy, but we are telling stories that are yeah. not just to impress our people, yeah. but to have an impact to our people. Yeah, so it's important to really tell stories that speak to people because essentially that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. You're not trying to tell things on the surface. You are here to serve, to heal, like you're saying. You're yeah. here to heal. And I think then, also like, like in our uh, conversation, mm -hmm. there's a lot that is happening, especially co mm -hmm. you know, that when we tell stories, yeah. already people, they relate. Mm -hmm. or they heal, mm -hmm. or they get stressed. Mm -hmm. Because we're telling stories that are very close to our people mm -hmm. sometimes, mm -hmm. depending on the stories that we tell. Can, We've I, been can I just tell you, so, so, yeah, I'm yeah, so sorry, fine. is it because I'm going to forget. Now that we're talking about that, do you think that most stories, and if you don't want to answer this question, I totally understand, like most stories that we see on TV or that we create or that we make are a true representation of who we are? No. I I don't. Yeah. Sometimes we we, we miss the point yeah. of what the stories that we yeah. tell. Like for example, what, what I'm asking is for example I'm from Mafigang mm -hmm. and in Mafigang it's even worse like I grew up in the farm. And when I mean a farm, like a proper plus, like there's like four houses there and I do, do you understand? Sure. And I, I don't claim to know anything about Igasi, and I don't know anything about that. But uh, a lot of our stories are full of drugs. Every new thing that's coming is drugs and shooting. Alcohol. And abuse. alcohol, gender, uh, abuse. And, and I'm thinking, is this all that we are? Is this a true representation of who we are? And also, like, if you keep seeing something for a long time, you stop believing that you are that particular thing. I think we, we are living in a society of believing is what you see. Mm -hmm. And our kids, that's what they, they do. Yeah. The influence of, like we're talking about social media. Mm -hmm. It's important as, as, as creatives mm -hmm. to sit down and look at where we are as a country. Mm -hmm. I'll make a, a, a good example. Writers for our days, they are being paid for writing per words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as an actor, you sit there and you're like, this is too much. Yeah. But this person sitting, and I'm here, I'm, I don't care about <laughs> how you're going to portray this. I'm just writing a story about yeah. looting. And I'm chasing the bag. I'm chasing the bag. Yeah. So sometimes we, 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 we sit on set as, 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 as actors when we start rewriting the stories mm -hmm. or cutting yeah. some lines because of certain things. So. Mm -hmm. Going back to what you're saying, research is very important yeah. as a writer. Mm -hmm. What are you writing about? Who are you writing mm -hmm. for? When are you writing the story? Why are you writing the story? Yeah. So the five W's they are very important before we even tell those stories. Yeah. Because you can easily influence people by your stories. Exactly. You know, a, a good example, I'm, every time I, I meet Abanda uh, Moshai, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I don't want to call them like I'm abuse or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm being celebrated. Him mm -hmm. to how shy a million. Yeah, you, you look at yeah. the, 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 you know, this pride in this in this gang of yeah. saying I'm fair to because the influence that you give to Lomdu mm Moshai, -hmm. we are related. We at Lomdu this guy, mm -hmm. and then you go to the story of of GBV. Mm -hmm. Once we start seeing guys. Abashai Abafaz, basic heroes in our stories, then I'm telling you, we will have the numbers escalating every time. Thank you so much. Because Thank what, what we are doing, every time you see these guys on TV or, or, or theater, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
and that's the end of the story. Exactly. And it ends there. Exactly. And as someone who is watching, you're like, guy, what could be there? Mm-hmm. And then you meet the writers or you meet the actors and they are, they are still trying to be clever about it. Mm-hmm. What happened to the story? No, I want you to, to think about it. I want you to go home and have the finishing <laughs> of... And you're like... You, you know what I mean? These are people's lives. And, and every time you have conversations with Abandu, Abangan, Abangan, and I finish it. Because also you must know when you are a writer. It's, when you take a pen, there's a certain part where you go, eh, I am, I'm still going well here, yeah, I'm still writing well. Yeah. And by the end, you're like, eh, I the creative juice, I you don't know what you, you just want to finish more. Now yeah. the finishing, you're like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> Thank you so much for this conversation because like, as much as I respect um, artists like Nina Simone, that the artist's job is to reflect the society, I still believe that what you give me on screen, sure. I'm more likely to become that person. Do you, do you understand? Yeah, I'm with you. Exactly. And thank you so much for also going into the limitations of the writer. Sometimes it's just that a person is tired. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with channel, channel wants this. It's yeah. just that a person is tired. Yeah. And we have to take that. And also, thank you so much for highlighting that. As actors, sometimes you get on set with directors and you have to change certain things. Because those are also what? Limitations. Sure. You know, sure. and lack of research, like you were saying. You know? But I think it's also like we've been complaining that we've been telling other people's stories. But now here we are having these opportunities of telling mm-hmm. our own stories. But we're yeah. not taking it serious. Yeah. Now, I know in, in theatre... We used to do about uh, Shakespeare and other things, yeah. and you're like, Ish. it's even worse because you have to think English. Yeah. Now you have to translate this thought to its course, as is good, and it's difficult. You now you can't even express yourself. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, now after being telling my own stories, because now I'm telling my stories in my own language, I can relate. I know these characters, yeah. you know, I, I can you connect with these characters, I've seen yeah. these people. But now we are having that opportunity, but we are looking again at the business side of it, not at the reality. Mm-hmm. Not that it's wrong, mm-hmm. but now once we start thinking, oh, I yeah. need a million now, I still need to keep this, I need, yeah. you know, then you will, you will start to employ wrong people for wrong roles, you will start not to get the quality that you are looking for yeah. you will start to do a mickey mouse you have a short period of time to make an impact but mm-hmm. because you want to take a shortcut yeah. then it's a problem because you have this short period of time i mean if you look at the states and other countries they have how many months of preparing for characters mm-hmm. you go to the gym they pay for that yeah. you, you know they pay for everything mm-hmm. but we don't have that privilege we mm-hmm. don't have uh, um, Acting coaches, we don't have voice coaches, we don't have, you know, yeah. but, you have to pay for all yes. that but we can't compare that side with this side because everything is fast cooked. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. So, let's come back before I let you go. Thank you so much for a wonderful interview. Um, an actor as a business, right? What do you understand of that? Like, when I come to you and say, What is an actor as a business? What is show this? What do I need to understand? Wow, that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in South Africa. No. <laughs> it, it, it exists in the people that are up there. Yeah. The business side of acting exists in the people that are out there. Yeah. Um, I don't know much of people that um, are now act, I mean, producers mm-hmm. who understand the background. It's few. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to mention their names, but mm-hmm. I know there are people now who started as actors, but now they have their own companies. Mm. But it took them years to yeah. get to where they are. Mm-hmm. And for us, all I know is that you get your, your 50 grand now, mm-hmm. and then you look at your problems of uh, six months back, your rent problems, mm-hmm. your installment problems, if yeah. you have kids, you know, all of those problems. And also you look at home. By the time you get that 50, it's divided into so many places because yeah. for the five months, past five months, you've been just sitting and doing nothing. Yeah. And the landlord, if you don't own the house, is calling you and saying, when are you paying? Mm-hmm. So your plans are already there. Like mm-hmm. now, I know next year I'm, 
I'm doing something ka 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 chenga. Now I And you busy now? Now, yeah. yeah. This December, mm. I'm going like okay, school fees, blah blah blah. He said, there's no time for you to sit and say now. Let me sit down and look at how am I going to mm. to to save. What is what? How do you save if it's from hand to mouth? What do you save? Yeah. So the system really needs to be better. Those royalties really need to start coming. But also the producers, yeah. the companies, they need to sit down and say, okay, fine, we are saying we're giving you 100,000, but in this 100,000, the 20,000 you're not going to get. We are fixing it for you. Yeah. You know, we make sure that the companies that, that we work for for a longer period, yeah, yeah. there is a fixed uh, amount for actors that says, okay, now this is for you. Yeah. Do we have medical aid? So let's start there before yeah. we even go to the business side. Yeah. Mm, that's because we don't even have medical aid. We don't yeah. even have those luxuries of saying, now I'm going to be able to go to a, a private hospital if something happens to yeah. me. You know, we have this thing of saying actors, they die poor. Mm. But the question is why? Yeah, there's a lot that actors are really faced with. Well, thank you so much for this interview. I want to do a part to two of this interview. Because I feel like it was really rushed and you've got so much to say. Yeah. I really loved it. I don't want to lie to you. You've got so much to say and I'd really love to hear. I'd also like to go back into the Inweba story because I feel like we rushed through that process as well. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much. I've learned a lot from those conversations in terms of the limitations that I think you know, what we need to do as actors to thrive within this industry, within this economy as well. Thank you. Thank you. Do also, you just I want to say to you, blessings to you mm -hmm. and uh, for your next journey. Yeah. And I would love to see more women taking the space. Yeah. And I would love to see you uh, wearing that red gown at some point. And ah, when I come so back, much pressure! When I come back, I say, doctor. <laughs> I must be a doctor. <laughs> No, it's, we're close. It's a, it's a we're close. We're close. We're close. But thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. See you as well. <laughs>